Okay, welcome back to Senate Education, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, May 5th, 2.32. Uh, we are now shifting gears on H106, uh, but Senators, I did ask Becky Wasserman to do a draft amendment on H426 that I will ask Jeannie to send to you uh, to look at. Some of us may have time, some of us may gather tomorrow morning at nine, but those who cannot be here, I believe are uh, colleagues from transportation, um, it'd be great for you to uh, have a look at it. I realize that we're still waiting for information, uh, but in short, what it does is it, um, it says schools need to do this testing uh, in, uh, by January, 2023. Uh, we do have Mr. Nichols here. I spoke to Mr. Nichols uh, during uh, the break and I'm gonna have him weigh in on this also uh, at some point before the end of today's work. Um, so, uh, okay, let's get going with H106. Mr. Fisher, thank you for joining us. Committee members will recall that we had asked Mr. Fisher to uh, speak with his colleagues uh, about 106 as it relates to getting the agricultural markets up and running. And we know that there's $500,000 traveling in the budget. And as I recall, uh, 60,000 of that was set aside um, to support the agency's work in getting that, uh, those markets going. And we had, I believe as the Committee on Agriculture, as well as this committee had heard from uh, Ms. Rosie Kruger that uh, the $60,000 would work. Um, on, you know, to, to sort of advance these, but Mr. Fisher um, felt and rightfully so it warranted a, a check-in with Ms. Kruger not being around to, uh, this week uh, to see where the agency uh, is landing on this issue. So Mr. Fisher, if I'm leaving anything out uh, on what your uh, assignment was, please let us know and uh, also let us know uh, what you found out. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, for the record, Ted Fisher, Director of Communications and Legislative Affairs for the Vermont Agency of Education. Very glad to join you all uh, again on another rainy afternoon. Um, so I just, I wanted to, um, I appreciate the uh, introduction, Senator, uh, Mr. Chair. I uh, just did want to note that as part of the conversations ongoing, we um, the uh, our director Kruger has been very clear that um, that we that there there will be ongoing staff support needed for this. This was one aspect of a larger position. So my un, my lack of clarity yesterday was whether or not we could by by focusing on one aspect get by without a, an additional position. So after checking in um, uh, internally and and speaking to Secretary French, he feels that um, this team is is. Uh, has been doing really excellent work since the beginning of the pandemic um, and uh, and has been short sort of at, at the low end of capacity for the work that they're being asked to do. Um, and we expect that not only do we expect this program, and I know that there is intent um, on both houses, and we share that intent to to make universal meals a permanent um, a permanent situation in the out years. We feel that the position is, is therefore necessary um, um, to make this policy program, excuse me, uh, workable. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chair, some some language was shared with me in advance, and I see that it's in the most up to date version of the bill. Would you like me to speak to that um, immediately, or or wait for questions? Uh, well, let's start with uh, just getting a better understanding of where we're at, and by that I mean. We're looking at this right now. This is we're, we're talking about the five hundred thousand dollars is is a one time, one year appropriation, as I understand it. And so I think uh, that is where maybe, and I don't want to speak for Ms. Kruger, but this the sixty thousand dollars coming off of that was again looking at a one, you know, to get this going for one year. And you're saying, no, no, we want, what, what do you want to get this going for a, a one year period? What would, what would satisfy the agency of education? I, I might, 
ask to phone a, a friend in gym, but my understanding is that this is an ongoing program. If that if that's been changed in the most recent bill, my understanding is that we were being asked to to stand up a new local foods incentive grant program both this year and in the and in the out year. Yeah, so that would be why that would be why we want to to get to to get I, it I, established I, with the position. I completely agree that that's what we're doing, but I thought we were kind of looking at this as just, um, and, and again, I could be completely wrong, sort of getting it going. So, but we're hearing that right now, the agency of education wants or, or believes and needs, you know, a full-time position. So what would that look like to you? What, what dollar amount would, uh, have you all kind of satisfied that you can you can get a person and get this work up and going? Understood. And I, I really uh, again apologize for no uh, for saying that I'm not 100 percent certain. Um, but the 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 Jim has inserted a provision section eight on page 21, um, which has a dollar amount of hundred thousand dollars for salary benefits and operating expenses um, for this position. Uh, my understanding is that comes from a previous version of um, uh, of S100, and um, I'll just note that when we talk about sort of these sort of positions, there's two numbers that the agency tends to use. One is $100,000, and one is $125,000. Okay. I'm not not an expert on the on the um, budget side of the house, but um, I believe that, that that has to do with the pay grade sure. um, that we're budgeting for. Um, so my understanding, and again, with no way to confirm, unfortunately, is that this was language that was, I, I actually know that Rosie can make it work with this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it will translate to on our end in terms of the hiring and establishment of the position, but um, I'm going to say that for our purposes today, that, that this number is sufficient. Uh, Mr. Demaray, would you remind us, uh, thank you, Mr. Fisher, uh, for that. Mr. Demery, so you, uh, the genesis of this language is? Um, S-100, that's passed by the Senate, yeah. has the language in it, but it doesn't take effect until next year. So I just took the language from that and put it into this bill. Uh, and if S-100 moves forward, we have to strip out that provision in S-100 um, because you don't want it twice, obviously, in two different bills. Okay, uh, I apologize for my own confusion here. So Mr. Demaray, point us to the page that you have this, uh, have done this. So we have it, I, I'm looking at uh, 106 draft 5.2. Yep, it is, um, was it kind of crazy though? Um, I'm sorry, Ted, you have the page, all right? Yep. Ted? Oh, Ted. My, my, my draft in front yes. um, And I had just actually scrolled up from it. It is page 21. Okay. It is the last section before the task force on universal school lunch. Okay. So here's page 21, uh, the task force for universal. Okay. So, um, so are we start, where does it, does it start and finish on page 21? There's a lot of changes on mine. It's just lines 10 through okay. 17. Perfect. Okay. So one full-time classified position, uh, $100,000 salary. So Jim, is this taken out of the $500,000? That might no. be. No. no. Okay. Uh, so um, in S100, you had yeah. this language. Um, you have this language now, identical language. Okay. I, I'm just copying it and putting it here because the other bill is going to affect for another year. Great. Yeah. So I just want to make sure for, for uh, and I do apologize for my confusion. So this is not something, this is already in the big bill, this $100,000. Nope. Okay. The, um, the $500,000 dollars for the program itself is in the big bill. Okay. Okay. The separate piece for this position is not in the big bill. It's in S100. But S100 being taking effect in July of next year, 
we right. the timing doesn't work, so it's being put into this bill. Right. So that, that it would be available sooner. So, which all makes sense, but how do we make a budgetary change on this date at this time without well, taking from the five hundred thousand dollars? Well, you have to go to appropriations here, I imagine, to authorize this position. Yeah, no, I understand that. I just don't see, and, and perhaps I look to uh, our most senior member center lines at this stage in the game with the House having the budget. The only thing that the Senate's position has already been represented, in other words, without this in it, committees of conference don't put, you know, new things in there. So the only way I see this going is with $100,000, if it's taken out of the $500,000 that's already in the budget. Does that make sense? Senator Lyons, please. Well, I mean, it, it, does, it does make sense, but there's nothing that would disallow for the additional funds. I mean, the money is increasing and decreasing in the appropriations conference committee process. The, the issue is the position, the position's not there, that also has to be negotiated. So <clears throat> I think a conversation with Senate appropriations would probably be in order on this. Um, or the funding is left in, I mean, this is, this would be post conversation. If the funding is left in that it has to come from uh, the ed fund or some other one time monies, if it's a single year appropriation. Uh, yeah, so it, the expectation, and I'm looking to Mr. DeMurray would that it wouldn't be a single year appropriation right. and that we're you know setting this up, this position up. Well, so it could be a three year position if, it, if it's, uh, if there are temporary three year dollars available, you know, ARPA funds. So I think it's a, I think that's a, I think that's a really good conversation to have with Senator Kitchell. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. And I think, um, but it's good to know from Mr. Fisher that this is what it would, would cost the agency. Uh, Jim, is there, because we're looking at food, nutrition, are ESSER set aside funds available for this? In other words, no, they're not. Okay. Not because of ESSER so much as other federal law prohibits okay. funding. Uh, I believe that's been confirmed by, by Rosie. This appropriation is from fiscal 22, and in the ongoing years, the agency would include this amount in its annual budget going forward. Okay. That's how it would be dealt with going forward. Okay. Questions for either uh, Mr. Demaray or Mr. Fisher at this point. Appreciate the clarity and the back and forth. I, I certainly understand a little bit better on how at least next steps, which mean, as Senator Lyons pointed out, a conversation with approps and see what they have to say. I mean, they know that we're working on this language and that this language that they felt as though this is where the most appropriate spot would be um, on the, for this issue to be handled. So I will contact Senator Kitchell. Um, I mean, worse, so let's just talk worst case scenarios here. Could we, if we needed to, could we say, uh, take the 100,000 out of the 500,000 for this one year to get this up and going, Jim? And um, I think that's a, a question for, for you. Um, it's really a question of how you wanna spend the money, I guess, yeah. But I mean, certainly we, we could, in, from your standpoint, we could draft, I mean, we could draft whatever we want, you're saying, if we wanted. Sure. Yeah. Okay. If you took the hundred thousand out of the five hundred thousand, yeah. what does that do to the? Yeah, no, it's a good program. question. What does it do to yeah. the program itself? Yeah, that would be kind might, of a last it might resort. Not be, it might not be enough. But we were about to take the sixty thousand out of the five hundred, Jim. Oh. Sixty thousand um, was going to be. Good question how that was shot originally. I believe that was coming out of the 500,000. Um, 
And that 60,000 is not in this draft. So this draft only has the position, not the additional 60,000 for a contractor. Senator Hooker. So in the original S100, the language was for a two year limited position. So how does that factor into this? Uh, I don't recall it being in the mid two-year position in the original X100. I have to go back and trace that. That draft has been through many iterations yeah, yeah. over time. So, but that I mean, we were looking to pay for that position as a limited, you know, a, a two-year position. So, when you talk about ongoing funds, you know, how does that? differ from, or what does that mean with regard to what we had initially intended? Well, if it was in, I'm sorry. No, no, I, please go ahead. I was gonna say, if it was a limited service position, position for two years, obviously we'd be funding only for two years. Um, so this version here has it funded ongoing, um, right? So it, there is a difference obviously in cost over, over time. I'll check. S100 as going to do is to see what it says right now. Through, through you, Mr. Chair, um, Senator Hooker, uh, I, I I don't know with without checking back through the various versions um, to 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 see what which one it is. But I do know that Rosie worked with the Senate Committee on Agriculture um, for from several weeks uh, uh, trading back iterations of drafts in order to get it to a place where it would be. Um, implementable on our side of the house. So that might be a change um, that came about as part of that. We are concerned that if we would need to sustain this program over years that we have the staffing um, uh, and capacity to do so. So again, I apologize to be caveating everything, but uh, but uh, my assumption is that that change was made during that process. I know that there was a, a couple of weeks of, of intensive work between her and, and uh, your uh, your neighbors down the virtual hallway. So two things to clarify, in S-400 as introduced by Senate Agriculture, this position was a permanent position. It was not two years, it was permanent. Um, and secondly, um, of the $500,000 appropriation in the as induced version, um, 60,000 could be used to retain a contractor. Senator Hooker, I'm wondering if it's possible you're thinking we did a limited service position. There were a lot of conversations around that as it related to literacy. Literacy. And, yeah. other, and also, I think, even uh, something else. But, um, but my instincts are we we keep it as, as is, and we take Senator Lyon's suggestion, and we work with our colleagues down the hall to see if it is indeed possible to advance this as, uh, as is, which would give, uh, as Mr. Fisher uh, uh, requested a uh, $100,000 appropriation for that position. Other questions or comments um, for either Mr. Fisher or Mr. Demaray? It might not feel like it, uh, colleagues, but I think we are getting somewhere. <laughs> uh, we really are. I mean, this this is uh, has been, I think, a heavy, but speaking for myself, a really important lift uh, not only for, you know, more nutritious meals, uh, but also creating this, these local markets. Uh, and I can only speak for myself, but down here, young farmers, I think it's going to benefit immensely uh, if, we can, if we can continue to move in this direction. Um, and so with that, Mr. Fisher, anything else from you or the agency? Please, I see that your hand is up, perfect timing. Uh, no, I'll just say I really appreciate the opportunity to join you, and I'm looking forward to joining you again in, in person, hopefully uh, uh, next year. So, um, but I, I would want to say I, I, I hate to um, I, I'm a poor vessel for this today because I uh, um, was unfortunately out of the office this morning. But I think, um, Mr. Chair, that uh, Deputy Secretary Boucher has reached out to you or to Jeannie about some of the other provisions, um, the, the community schools provisions of this. Uh, I think she has some additional. Um, concerns or feedback to share with you. So I just wanted to note that, unfortunately, I don't have the specifics. I've been sort of trying 
um, over the past hour to, to see what, what exactly they are, but I don't have them at this moment. So I just wanted to note that for you. Did you, did you um, say and, concerns uh, and or compliments or just concerns? I, 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 <laughs> I think, I think, I know that she's worked very hard with you. I'm sure that she has some she's compliments. Been terrific. Um, she really has. I think she has some, some feedback. So she, uh, uh, Dr. So Boucher uh, has, has been an incredible partner in this and uh, I owe her a phone call and I did see an email from her. Um, and uh, please, if you do talk to her, apologies for not getting back to her yet, but I will have a conversation with her and we will not move this forward without hearing from Dr. Boucher again. So great. I will pass that along and you, you folks have been doing a lot of work. So, uh, so I, I appreciate the opportunity to join you. And, well, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Bishop. We know that so. you've been leading the, the uh, you've been managing uh, so many different fronts as it relates to COVID in our school. So thank you for your work and thanks for uh, uh, pinch hitting, if you will, at this point. So terrific. I appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, great to see you. Good to see you all as well. We, as you know, I reached out to you and Mr. Nichols, great to see you as well. Uh, I, Mr. Nichols uh, was following our work uh, and uh, was in touch with us about a language change, which he emailed us last evening. And uh, I, I know that it was, I, I believe it was a language change that you actually proposed, which led me to calling uh, committee members, Mr. Robinson. Uh, and uh, knowing that this committee, we wanna get everybody on the same page working together. Uh, I have to thank Mr. Nichols and Mr. Robinson for taking the time out of their day to, to work together. I think we're, we're getting closer to, uh, uh, to resolving this and making all parties uh, if not happy, satisfied moving forward. So with that, I wonder if I may start with you, Mr. Robinson, if you would just uh, bring us to the section um, that we are discussing and uh, tell us what your thoughts are. Yes. Uh, if that works on. best for you, if not. Ab absolutely. Okay. Yeah, let me just um, find it in the draft that everybody was just had open. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So this is specifically related to the definition of the site-based leadership team that uh, Jay spoke to yesterday. And, and senators, if you'll just take a look, it's on page nine, section five. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, so I provide, I, emailed you all some um, comments this morning, recognizing what Jay spoke to yesterday around wanting to make sure that this doesn't become duplicative or overly burdensome. Obviously, we provided testimony, Vermont A provided testimony earlier about the importance of this to the integrity of the work. So um, Jay and I had uh, some back and forth, a good conversation. And basically what you, we'll see um, with some, some caveats that Jay and I will speak to in a minute, or I'll probably pass it to Jay to speak to specifically, is that there's language in there that says the site-based leadership may include the then enumerated parties, right? And then it makes it clear that um, they're sort of consultative, consulted in the process of supporting the program, right? Um, the original language that Jay and I um, came to agreement on and, and shared with Jim had a different sort of clause at the end there um, that I will, if it's okay with you, Senator Campion, I'd like to um, pass it, have Jay speak to that section and the import of, of that section to this. But what's exciting, I think, here is that we're able to keep this language while also respecting um, and respecting the integrity of the program, the role of the site-based leadership team while also maintaining continuity of, of leadership inside our schools as well. Great, Mr. Nichols. Hi, Jay Nichols, uh, Executive Director of VPA, speaking on, on behalf of VSBA, VPA, and VSA. So yeah, Colin spoke to, uh, spoke to our concerns. We had a language that we both agreed on um, I think, and Jim, please feel free to correct me. I think Jim um, 
was from a from a legal mastermind like he is was worried about the word school district and so i proposed some language afterwards that colin uh, uh agreed to that would say school districts then a you know uh asked inside of a parenthesis so that it could be plural and uh, and or supervisory unions and so that it could be plural. Um, in Title 16, in many places, we have school districts, supervisory unions being used interchangeable all the time. We just want to make it clear that it's that the, the school district or the supervisory union is the governing authority over whatever goes on. That's our only intent here. So we think the language that we agreed on with Vermont NEA earlier today is, is in terms of the field understanding is the best language that we could use or something similar to that. Mr. Demaret, any comments from you? Yeah, that's fine. It's a little, little clunky um, to spell out that way, but the, the reason I raised the issue is in, in this draft based on your testimony yesterday, you wanted to expand the eligible, eligible recipient definition to be school district or two more school districts working together or two more SUs working together. So who the recipient is could be a, a variety of combinations. So referring to a school district didn't really make sense in terms of how it's been framed. We can add in references to all that stuff and maybe we can just use the definition of eligible recipient instead here. If that would be okay. That, that works for me. I'm looking to Mr. Nichols and Mr. Robinson. Yeah, that would work for me too. I, I think it's more clunky to have by the community school coordinator. It makes it like that role has more authority than it really would. So I'm, I'm fine with Jim's suggestion. Colin, how about you? Yeah, we'd be comfortable with that. And okay. I think it clearly points to the enumerated eligible recipients. Right, right. Uh, committee, I'm seeing uh, committee members nodding. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, I, I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to convince anyone to, to uh, present this on the floor. So it's, uh, it's likely gonna be me. So, and I'm good with it. So, uh, uh, okay, great. Anything else, gentlemen, from either of you as we, uh, take yet even another step closer to passing um, universal or uh, community schools with some. Uh, Senator Persley, please. I, I'm assuming the answer is yes, just from the agreement on that language, but I, I assume both Colin and Jay were listening to the testimony yesterday about the kind of multi-district approach or, or approach that might not have the same kind of configuration of a coordinator and you know the just to, if you guys were supportive of the approach that was proposed yesterday by the people that provided testimony gentlemen did you have an opportunity to uh follow yesterday's work i only got to see a little bit of it i got uh some phone calls from people who thought they were in crisis over wearing masks sure. uh, with sports so i had a pretty busy afternoon <laughs> dealing with that uh, whole thing but in terms of the flexibility piece uh, senator Perschlick. I think that's the key. Make it as flexible as possible so schools can have the entry point that makes the most sense for them. The preserve Secretary of, of the Agency of Natural Resources right to and weigh this. Who that might be. Okay. Well, we, well, we've learned about A&R. Um, that's right. I, I, I will say. No problem. Uh, you know, Jim, I'm just always relieved when it's not me, so it really doesn't matter who it is or that it even happens. So we, please, no problem. We, Mr. We've all had those moments. Yeah. Thank you, Senator. Um, so, Senator Perch, like I, I did listen to that yesterday, and um, it, we were comfortable with that notion. Obviously, school districts collaborate on many things across many yeah. components of the work, and and it makes sense to make sure that is not prohibited by the language in this. So, I know, just say broadly speaking, uh, want to thank thank the committee for digging into this important bill and exciting sort of demonstration demonstration grant. All right. Uh, anything else now as we, while we are on 106 with uh, Mr. Nichols and Mr. Robinson, we can 
We will certainly uh, be hearing again from Dr. Boucher, uh, some, uh, and we'll also be looking at final language. Uh, but anything else on this before we shift again to uh, back to 426 while Mr. Nichols is here? Okay. Mr. Robinson, thanks a million. Good to see everybody. I'll stick around to listen. Okay, great, great. Uh, let's see, Mr. Nichols, thanks so much. Uh, really appreciate you jumping in on this issue at uh, the last minute. Senators know that I may have already mentioned this, but I did reach out to Mr. Nichols around lunchtime about us moving in the direction with an amendment that would require schools to test for radon and asked him uh, if he'd be so kind uh, to carve out some time and talk to his colleagues, Ms. Siglowski and uh, Mr. Fan, or not Mr. Fan, and Mr. Francis, which he's had an opportunity to do. Um, and let us know uh, where uh, that group of individuals is on this particular issue at this point. So if you don't mind, Mr. Nichols, uh, the floor is yours and uh, we welcome your thoughts. Great, thank you. So uh, specifically to radon testing, um, the three executive directors had a conversation and we basically have all made statements in the past around unfunded mandates and I know all of you know that. So that's something that we feel that we have to be consistent about. Um, even if we think that the, that the program is a valid program and obviously we think this is something that's valid and we appreciate you're looking into it, the safety of our, of our students and our staff members is paramount to all of us. So our big issue with it would be around unfunded mandate. And for us, uh, we've tried to be consistent. If the unfunded mandate was on, on menstrual products, which I testified in favor of and supported, I did put in my testimony, it was an unfunded mandate, even though we think it's a great program. And it's something regardless of the amount of money that's involved, we wanna keep putting out there. Several years ago, Secretary, actually Commissioner Holcomb at the time, did a report where she showed <clears throat> how much money was being spent in school budgets that really maybe shouldn't have been in school budgets. And she came up with a figure like 76% of the school budget stuff was school, really school connected. And a lot of the rest was mental health or health services or something that really probably should not be necessarily considered a education fund. And when you do that, you're constantly showing your education fund going up and people keep saying how much money we're spending. And we just wanna make it clear that a lot of that money is not spent on academics or traditional schooling for students the way that it is in other states, which drives up the per pupil cost. So we just have to keep mentioning that. The other big point here, and, and I wanna be really clear on this, is the Vermont School Boards Association actually has a resolution that their membership signed on to saying that they would not support any unfunded mandates. So their organization is in a position where they have to, on any issue, have to state that. I think th those are the real big things. Do we think radon testing is important? Absolutely. Is it gonna be really expensive? It doesn't sound like the testing itself is gonna be really expensive. Um, can we pay for it out of ESSER three funds? That remains to be seen. Um, and then the other, the other point of this whole thing is, if there are mitigation issues, if at school, at any time, any town elementary school, we find there's a mitigation situation, who's gonna pay for that cost? And obviously we would be pushing that it's a public health concern and should be paid for at the state level. I think that's that's pretty much it, Senator Campion. Subject to any questions anybody might. That was terrific, very helpful. Uh, and you know, as we've been talking, uh, Mr. Nichols and I, and I, you probably have heard us. I think number one, we feel uh, without a doubt we we can't keep kicking this can down the road. There are teachers, children, uh, staff that um, need to know the status of the buildings that they're working in. If I may be exaggerating here, but I think if this were a private industry situation and, and an employee uh, was concerned and for something was found, absolutely, it would be uh, a big deal. And, and we need to take this as seriously as we possibly can. I completely understand where you're coming from with regard to an unfunded mandate. I'll just say, and, and, and I think, I mean, you know this, uh, and I think you would agree with this, we would be delighted to hear back from the Federal Agency of Education that these ESSER funds can indeed be used uh, for uh, testing uh, for radon. Uh, that, that would be the ideal situation. Um, less ideal might be that what we're talking about is, is, is having schools and school districts do this work, recognizing 
that with their ESSER funds, they may have out there uh, projects that they had in some ways budgeted for, but now they have ESSER funds. And in some ways they're giving some relief to some perhaps budgetary issues that now they might have a few extra thousand dollars to do the testing. The other side of this that I've been thinking about a lot, and I know the committee has been talking about a lot is, you know, we just keep hearing that the Biden administration and Congress is going to be coming down with uh, what we hope is a, a strong infrastructure bill and getting us ready for that is 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 key and to me that's why all these things are coming together and the timing seems like this is, is this is the right time to do it uh and but i completely uh, appreciate your very thoughtful um comments and, and certainly realize uh and know that you are as committed to student and uh, staff help that help as we are Committee, any questions or comments for Mr. Nichols at this point? Uh, please, Senator Lyon. Uh, just a, a comment that as we were talking about the elimination of radon, should it be found in testing, yeah. and testing is a lot less expensive, as you said, that um, the, the whole issue around HEVAC improvement and replacement will also go toward uh, radon could go toward radon elimination. So it might be uh, a two-fector, not a trifecta, but a, we could do two things at once. We, we don't want to kill birds, so I won't say it. But um, so, so there is some, there is an opportunity here. It's not, I don't think any of us like unfu unfunded mandates, but seeing how less expensive it is to test and then Maybe there's some uh, serendipity out there with uh, infrastructure funds might be able to accomplish some elimination of radon. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed. Yeah. Great. Uh, Mr. Nichols, uh, this is, I'm sure this is not going to be goodbye. Uh, so this is, <laughs> we still have a, a couple of weeks, uh, but. But uh, thank you for uh, coming in, and thanks for always being at the end of the uh, at the end of the phone. And we may see you again as early as tomorrow or four o'clock this afternoon. So uh, don't hesitate. Yeah, thank we you. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Very grateful. Thank you. Okay, committee. I will ask uh, Jeannie to share the edited version of that amendment. Uh, one thing I want to be perfectly clear on is, and I mean this. Anybody ever wants uh, a different order in terms of names on amendments in any way, you just let me know. Uh, I, I, I do mean that, you know, usually we go with the chair and then alphabetical, but um, I don't want, you know, tick off Terenzini uh, and have him, you know, out there bad mouthing the chair uh, because he's in the T's. Um, How did you know that's what I've been doing? Well, I didn't, I knew, you know, I saw some kind of GoFundMe thing just pop up uh, to uh, replace me. But listen, uh, at this point, <laughs> we'll just go with it. Um, okay, so I think Jeannie will send that along for everybody to review. Uh, we have Michelle Childs coming in at 3.30. Uh, so again, I apologize for the clunkiness, but we do want to start this work with Ms. Childs, and she's going to be the one to take us through uh, and give us the background on H-183, which is, again, the sexual violence uh, bill that uh, we're working on for judiciary.